very interesting topic today for our last video of this season. Today we're talking about the occult and practices such as horoscopes, uh, consulting psychics or even Ouija boards. So here I'm thinking of, of things right from the outright worship of Satan uh, through seances, uh, real magic as opposed to sleight of hand, fortune telling, people who cast spells, wearing charms, the use of Ouija boards, astrology, the whole shooting match really. Now I want to say from the beginning that the Bible's worldview is totally supernatural. It totally recognizes good and evil and the power of God and of the devil. Uh, it, it is open to both. So when we see first in uh, a classic example of this first in Deuteronomy, where God warns his people about evil power, and he says, as you can see, when you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there, that no one before be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or cast spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. You'll notice there that all eight of those things listed are an attempt to gain knowledge that is ordinarily hidden, but also this knowledge then allows us to influence or have power over people or future events. That's kind of really what's behind it. You should also notice from that passage that God equates witchcraft with the sacrificing of one's own children to false gods. He takes it that seriously, and we would find the child sacrifice terribly abhorrent and you need to know that in God's mind this this chasing demonic power is just as bad in Isaiah 44 as you can now see on your screen God is saying there you know I'm the Lord maker of all things I've stretched out the heavens I spread the earth out by myself I also foil the signs of false prophet and make full fools of diviners so that's his kind of attitude there. He, he, he is so much superior to this kind of demonic power. And he actually mocks it further in Isaiah, as you can see. He says, Keep on then with your magic spells and with your sorceries, which you have labored at since childhood. Let your astrologers come forward, those stargazers who make predictions month by month. Let them save you from what is coming upon you. All of them go down in their error, and there's not one who can save you. Continuing with a biblical picture, a couple of more examples we see in Acts, in Acts 19, that when salvation came to Ephesus, many of the sorcerers brought their scrolls and uh, had a great bonfire, as it were. In Galatians 5 and Revelation 21, we see sorcery or witchcraft listed with what we call vice lists. When Paul says in Galatians 5, the acts of the flesh are obvious, and he does everything from sexual immorality there, to idolatry, jealousy, drunkenness, and witchcraft is among that, as it is in Revelation when John is describing those who are outside the gates. He includes there those who practice the magic arts. So why is this wrong? Well, it's wrong basically because it's, it's humanity's way of trying to get at power and go around God to do it. So it exalts humanity and diminishes God. John Piper says it really well. Uh, you can read the quote on your screen. Consulting mediums, tea leaves, fortune cookies, horoscopes, crystal balls, psalmist, or any other oracles beyond God's word is wrong because it belittles God as an inadequate revealer of mysteries. It says that God is either unable or unwilling to tell me all that is good for me to know. Therefore, he lacks the power or the goodness to help me, and so I'll take matters into my own hands. God actually considers it a form of spiritual adultery when the church cheats on him, as it were, with demonic powers. And, and he alludes to that there in the verse in Leviticus. You can see, I'll set my face against anyone who turns the medium and spiritist to prostitute themselves by following them. So in summary, the Bible clearly recognizes these two worlds. It recognizes the power of the demonic and of evil. So you know, you may ask, are Ouija boards real? And the answer the Bible would give is yes, that's a real power behind that, but it's a very dangerous power. It's not wise for anybody, but certainly for the Christian, it's a form of spiritual adultery. And for the Christian, it really betrays a lack of trust in God to provide the answers for us that we need. So there are these two worlds and they're real, but the counterfeit, the demonic, is very dangerous. 
So I hope that helps. If you have any questions or comments, as always, I look forward to reading them below. Thank you.